Okay, okay. So here we are. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So uh, it's one more time, one more class, one more lesson. I hope you guys are doing great and, you know, we can go ahead and have an amazing class tonight. So for this evening, the topics that we're going to be covering are pretty easy. We're going to be talking about opinions, which was the topic for last Friday, um, which we didn't really get the chance, you know, to practice because um, very little uh, of the the group was actually here. So this evening, we are going to be working on that, on um, opinions, like how to say some of the things that we think that we believe um, then relative classes, we're going to be also talking about that, about how to say um, or establish the connection between two phrases that are basically about the same person. This is something very common, something that happens very often in English. So yeah, hopefully, you know, it's going to be helpful for us. And uh, of course, it can um, help you establish those connections between two or more things. Now, we also have um, something related to expressions. Basically, the topic is feelings and, and uh, gestures. So when we talk about feelings and gestures, what we are referring to is how you react in a specific moments or how people, people generally react in a specific moment. So that's what we're gonna uh, also be covering. And if we have time, I do not have a huge um, hope that this is going to happen. But if we have time, we are also going to be talking a little bit about uh, conversation. So we have a, a, a short conversation there that we might get to practice. Now, I hope you guys are having a great time, that you had an amazing day today. Now, we are going to start with the question for this evening. Tonight, I am not going to necessarily be... Um, you know, sharing you the question. I am going to go with the regular route as we have done before. Um, you know, just having the practice um, coming like a straight up without the actual banner of um, the question. So we're simply going to practice as it is. And uh, yeah, so the, um, the idea, of course, as always, is that you say as many words or you pronounce as many words as possible. And, uh, you know, we can get to roll a little bit of the English out of our mouth. So for this evening, the question is very easy. What is your favorite technological advancement or your favorite, te your favorite technological gadget? Like something that technology has given us that you love to have or something that you wouldn't be able to like, you know, have a regular life without. So what is your favorite technological gadget. Um, in my case, if you allow me to share, I will have to say that one of my favorite ad gadgets that technology has given us is Bluetooth speakers because I love listening to music and I love carrying music with me like wherever I go. So Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth um, earphones or headphones are an amazing invention in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I of course, enjoy listening to music and doing all sorts of things related to that. So in my opinion, that will be uh, my favorite invention by humanity so far. How about you? What are your favorite gadgets? We're going to start by hearing from Edwin. In your case, Edwin, what is your favorite um, technological invention? Uh, sorry, what is the main gadget? Gadget is basically any equipment. Cualquier cosa que usted pueda eh, like, adjudicar a la tecnología. O sea, un gadget se refiere simplemente como a un dispositivo. Ah, oh, ok. Uh, mm -hmm. um, um, I don't know. Uh, my favorite gadget um, eh, y... Probably is um, oh, how diff earphones. Um, basic and that is okay. Great. So your favorite uh technological gadget will be 
earphones in. So uh, make the difference that these ones are normally known as headphones because they go around the head. And the ones that go inside the ear are the ones that we call earphones. Sí, los que van así como chiquitos son los earphones y estos se, normalmente se dicen como headphones en, en inglés. En español, pues, le decimos audífonos auriculares, ¿verdad? A cualquiera de los dos. So, yeah, pretty good. Okay, cool, nice. How about in the case of uh, Rodrigo Hernández? In your case, Rodrigo, what is your favorite um, technological gadget? Something that you like that, um, you know, we as humans have been able to invent. Right now, mm -hmm. I think the real is a uh, uh, great gadget in the uh, technology because uh, you, you have the more of the many, many, many information in your house or in the cortical, or um, more um, say, um many days of uh, what uh, a different 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 thematic mm -hmm. topics or, uh, topics uh, only okay uh, maybe I I, I uh, only I think the uh, in my case. Always, ¿cómo se puede verificar? Ajá. de información, porque la es no información en esta Oh, okay. Great. So, yeah, I mean, um. As you said, you know, nowadays we have access to much information uh, through, you know, things like the internet. And of course, it's an amazing invention, something that um, without it, it will be very hard even to have these sort of classes, for example. Um, so, of course, it's um, something that has helped humanity a lot to connect, to learn, to share, to know. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree, agree with you. And um, of course, it's something that it's basically indispensable for today's life. Now, how about in your case, Rodrigo Mendoza? How about you? What is your favorite technological gadget so far? Uh, good evening, teacher. In my case, mm -hmm. I have different uh, technology gadget, gadgets. Uh, for example, in my work, use uh, headsets. Uh, but headsets wireless. Mm -hmm. um, I I use a laptop uh, because I prefer the tablet uh, because it's, it's touch is um, and I prefer a touch. I don't like use uh, the mouse. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in my job, uh, use uh, Microsoft Teams uh, for different uh, meeting. And I consider use is is very is very easy, but um, I like use headsets, a uh, uh, laptop, and and uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, great, very good. Um, so it's basically um, uh, you know, having access to. Um, like easier ways of doing things. Basically, that's you know the 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 thing that you like having an, an easier uh, or more accessible way of doing things. Because yeah, having wireless headsets, of course, is going to uh, make things a lot better. Because you can move around, you can like even stand up easier than when you have uh, wires. Because with the wires, you can only go as far as the wire allows you to. Um, using the touch on the screens, of course, that's also something very useful, something that allows us to do more creative things sometimes. In my case, I I will have to say that I love using mouses. Um, maybe because, you know, I grew with them and all that. I love using mouses. And because also I have had 
a bad experience when it comes to um having like the the mouse pad on the on the PC on the on the laptop thing. So I al almost always break them. So I prefer to use the mouse. And uh, another thing that I like about mouses is that you can have uh, like as many designs as you want. So that's you know a reason why I like to um to use them. But I can totally agree with you in the fact that using touch screens is always going to be beneficial for creativity and all those sort of things. So great, very good. Now, um, and as you said, also using Meet, it's a great tool. Um, people here don't use it that much because I haven't really seen many companies, you know, using Meet. But still, it's oh wait, no, it's CS Meet, verdad? Yeah. Google Meet. Uh huh. Google Meet, right? Yeah. Google yeah, Meet cause... and Microsoft Teams uh -huh. are different. Yeah, because uh, I I remember that I used to um to use Teams when I was a uh, university teacher. I didn't really like it. I felt like it was uh kind of like outdated. I don't know. It didn't really have as many options in my opinion. And I feel like um you know Meet doesn't have as many, but sometimes it's better. You know, simpler sometimes is better. So yeah. Anyway, let's move on. And now let's hear maybe from um Harit. In your case, Harit, what is your favorite technological gadget so far? Good evening. Good evening. My favorite gadgets are smartphone. Science with their different apps, they facilitate, facilitate communication and entertainment. Okay, very good. So, yeah, that's also something that I was expecting, you know, that someone was going to mention at some point. Because, yeah, smartphones are basically computers that save everything that we have mentioned before we can do most of the things that life in a technological way requires nowadays simply from a smartphone of course there are going to be some things that we cannot do from them but you know they are very useful tools and they have simplified many things in our lives like for example now people don't really have to spend long hours trying to like do calculations when it comes to doing math. So you can simply just look for a calculator there and you know you get it done. So there are many things, many, many things that, um, for example, in my case, something that I used to do a lot and now I don't do it anymore is keeping an agenda, like a physical agenda. I know that it's better sometimes because if I, for example, uh, get to lose my phone or something, I'm going to lose all the information, but, um, that is another good thing about technology. It's that you have the option to like back things up and, you know, have the backup uh, whenever you need it. So yeah, that's another great, you know, thing that you can like interconnect apps so that you can um, save your information somewhere. So in my case, um, as I think I have shared with you guys, I work on other things. Like I work as an electrician and an air conditioning technician. I need to keep like, record on when I'm doing things like for example when I'm talking about maintenance in like an air conditioning system I need to remember when did I agree with the person that I was going to visit them again so I have seen that many people just they just forget many other technicians they simply forget when they did uh, a maintenance and in my case I simply save it on my phone and my phone is going to remind me you know a few days later I mean a, a few days before I have to go and do that maintenance again I will have it right there so it's very useful um, to keep things like those. And yeah, as you said, Hadid, there are many other apps that probably we haven't even tried that, of course, are going to be helpful for entertainment, for business, for many, many other options. So great. Now, how about in the case of Jonathan? How about you, Jonathan? What will happen to be your favorite technological gadget so far? Hi, good evening. For good evening. me, too. I share the love of the headphones. I have the Galaxy Boots too because they are they are they are wireless and so small. I use them almost all the time. I like them because they don't hurt my big ears. Mm -hmm. I can use the voice control to not write or ask Siri things. Yes, I use Samsung headphones and with an, an iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's more expensive than the than the yeah the, the iphone yeah the airports are, uh, are way more expensive yeah. than the yeah than the but it, it's so so equal 
to yeah, earphones. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy music with the sound isolating effect. I also love to listen to podcasts and audiobooks when I driving. I only put my uh, my finger in one or two touch to change the songs. I really mm -hmm. love it. I remember in the past when the headphones or the headphones only with cable. Uh -huh. And it's very hard to, when you go on the bus, for example, and the cable, and I don't really, I don't Tangles. remember. They tangle? Tangles, Tangles. Uh -huh. the minimum of enredar. Yeah, they tangle, yeah. they get tangled. It's so, so hard when you walk and... And uh, the minimum of trabarse en algo, I, I don't... Yeah, they get stuck on things. That's right. Yeah, uh, that happens a yeah. lot as well. Mm -hmm. In when, but when the the wireless headphones, it's so fantastic for me. And um, and the the chairs during all the day. Okay. Yeah. It's that's, all. That's great. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's a, that's a very inconvenient thing. Um. Uh, I am trying to remember. I don't remember the brand, but I remember that when I was in the, in my first years of, of uh, the university, I used to get a pair of uh, earphones almost every two months because they will ruin like that often. You know, they were wired, but they were very comfortable. So I liked them because they were comfortable and they were not that expensive. They were like five dollars back then. Um, but yeah, it was it was great to like you know I have always been uh in love with like music and listening to music while i'm on the bus or everything but what you said is so true like you know um, wired earphones or headphones they always get tangled and you make a whole mess when you're trying to like use them um and actually today i got to experience something that i hadn't experienced in a long time and it's actually getting stuck on something i was on uh, on the bus and as soon as i um got out of the bus I got stuck with, with my backpack. So I was carrying my backpack only on one shoulder and the other like shoulder thing got stuck on a, on a taxi mirror. And I was like, what? So it was something that I hadn't experienced in a long time. And I did, I did remember that when I was in the university, I will get stuck on almost everything because of my um, earphones. But yeah, you know, that's, that's part of what uh, we have to pay for or go through because we like music. So Part of the thing that happens. Now, uh, the last person that we're going to hear from tonight, Karen, in your case, what will happen to be one of your favorite um, technological gadgets that we have so far? Um, well, I don't like to use um, headphones or because I I used to work, well, I worked uh, for like, yeah, seven years in a call center. So uh, for right now, I cannot use headphones. Sometimes I have to use it in meetings of my work, but it is no more than one hour. It's just mm -hmm. short. So um, I would say that I'm going for cell phone. Yeah. Okay. Cell phone is, uh, I use my cell phone for everything. As, as you said, calculator, um alarm uh, reminders uh, different things even calendar dictionary yeah dictionary yes yes um yes it's, it's sometimes i'm reading something and i don't know what is the meaning of some word translator yeah and uh, to find restaurants uh, to find everything addresses um ways for example i think that everything is is on the cell phone okay great yeah and it's so true now there is something that you just said that, that i do not share which is um <clears throat> trusting ways i do not trust ways honestly i mean i have tried but ways has got me into so much trouble that i do not trust it anymore i prefer to use google maps instead of ways because yeah ways is like i don't know why it always gets me to the worst um, locations. Like I remember one time when the situation wasn't like as it is now, you know, with the security in the country. Uh -huh. um, it was actually the first time that I got the chance to like go on a trip alone with my girlfriend. Um, and uh, we were trying to come through like the Pan-American um, um, uh, road. 
back here to San Miguel because we mm -hmm. wanted to go to Alegría. Um, so I had to go through San Salvador because we were actually leaving um, La Ruta Panorámica. So it was supposed to go through like Soyapango. <laughs> every time I remember this, it's just so terrifying because it got me to a road that was actually closed. There was like a huge mountain of asphalt in the middle of the road. So it was basically undrivable. I don't know if they were fixing the road or why it was closed, but it was almost a meter high of uh, like a, an asphalt thing. Um, so it was basically impossible for me to go through there. And there was supposed to be like the safest road. Then it got me into into some colony thing. And I don't know. I was just so scared because, <laughs> I mean, I am from San Miguel. I, I do not know San Salvador that well. And I mean, like, roads here are broader you know and i was in a in a road that was very narrow and i was basically touching houses or cars houses or cars and i don't know i just got so scared we were so stressed both of us mm -hmm. when we left because it was such a bad experience and uh, i gave it another go i once again trusted it in guatemala and it got me lost again so it's like <laughs> nah, i i I just don't trust Waze anymore. I so much prefer to use Google Maps because it, I feel like it has more. Waze does come useful when it comes to like, you know, um, unknown roads, like roads that are less traveled because Google doesn't recognize some roads. But yeah, I do have it because I do have it. And also mm -hmm. something that is very useful is also with police. Uh, you know, when they're like, yeah, police. Yes. On the road, it's very yes. useful with that. But Apart from that, mm, nah, I, no. just, I don't I know. I haven't tried Google Maps. I think I, I'm considered that like confusing. I'm not sure if it's me. Uh -huh. it, it was with Waze. It was almost the same. It, well, yes, the same at first. I didn't trust in Waze. Uh -huh. um, but at, at the end, I, I get used to. So um, right now I prefer Waze. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah. yeah, but, you know, that's the amazing thing about technology. Like, we have options. It's basically like colors, you know. Yes. We have the chance to pick what we feel safer or more secure with. And, yeah, for me right now, Waze just doesn't do it. But, <laughs> you know, it's a great I'm app. I'm going to try I, Google Maps. I'm going to give it a try. So. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> um, I remember that the first map that I started to use was actually Apple um, you know, the app maps in Apple, but um, here in El Salvador is not that useful, so I wouldn't recommend it. But in other countries, like they have many features that are amazing, uh, but here is actually not up to date, so many roads do not appear on that map. So it's way better, you know, to just go with like mm -hmm. probably Waze. Waze, I think, is like the most, the most uh, famous, here common, the right? Yeah, yeah, the most common. It's like yeah. almost everyone has Waze. So, yeah. yeah, there are a lot of applications of Apple. I haven't tried it because I'm I'm just trying to get used to, to a new um, system. Mm -hmm. um, but but yes, I, I think it's a little bit more complicated than Android. Yep, it is. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Even, I mean, yeah, even my company remind me, send me emails asking me to um, try update. the apps. Oh, yeah update uh, the system yes even my um my work yes because i have it linked it uh -huh. with uh outlook teams uh -huh. everything yes i have been a an, an iphone user for almost seven years now uh -huh. and i do agree it's complicated i mean when mm -hmm. you first try it or the first time that i was using an iphone I remember that it was hard because I came from like, you know, just having the, 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 the easy way of like going back and all that. And on an iPhone, you don't have as many options. Like it's very hard for you to get to the options part. And on an Android, it's way easier. So yes, it is. I, I like the fact that I do, I do know both systems. If I'm to be honest, my favorite system is Pixel, like the one from Google. However, I, the first Pixel that I got, it was um, a failure. Like it broke almost two months after I got it. So I just decided to go back into Apple, you know? Yeah. I don't think that I'm going to change to Android again. I'm going to go back. No, I'm going to keep with. Stay with Apple? Yes, with Apple. Yes. Okay, cool. Very good. 
All right then. So now we have opinions here. And as we have been doing, we have been sharing our opinions about things. We're going to continue to do so. So here we have four different columns. And the idea here is that, uh, wait, is Raul here? No, Raul is not here. So Raul was the only person who was helping me out with this activity on Friday. Um, but the idea here is that we are going to try to find the words that correspond to each of the columns. So we have, for example, awful. What things, what are the words here that would represent something awful in your opinion? So let's see. We're going to start with that one. What would be something that you considered awful? Which of these words would you um, set as something awful, something not as welcoming? So uh, just... Horrible. Oh, sorry? Horrible. Okay, so we start with horrible. Great. So horrible, yeah, that would be something awful, something sad happening. Um, what else can we set into awful? So I would like to hear from all of you guys. Uh, so maybe we can get an opinion from uh, um, Jonathan. So let's, oh wait, the first thing, sorry, yeah. I failed I failed on something. The first thing was that I wanted to read all the words that we have so that we know, you know, how to pronounce each and every one of them. So we have absurd, yeah. or bizarre, so, mm -hmm, so. bizarre, disgusting. Many people make this G sound as a Z. So don't uh, get distracted by that. You can make it sound as disgusting because uh, it sounds a little bit like a Z. However, it's supposed to be a G, disgusting. Uh, then we have dreadful, dumb, fabulous, fantastic, horrible, marvelous, odd, outstanding, ridiculous, silly, terrible, unusual, and weird. So we have the first one, horrible, great. Now, Jonathan, which other word would you think that fits into this um, idea? Yeah, well, if the meaning of hopeful, I don't remember. Which one, sorry? What if the meaning of hopeful, I don't remember. Awful, oh, it's yeah. something something bad, something, uh, oh. yeah, something bad that happens. The another word in this case is terrible. Okay, great. Uh, and it will be okay, just terrible. Great. So terrible. What else can be uh fit under the column of something awful? So we have. I'm going to listen to you. We're gonna see later on. So we have bizarre. Bizarre. Mm -hmm. Bizarre. And one more. One more word. So let's see one more. We still have... Uh, dreadful. Great. Dreadful. All right. So um, here, the words that we have, horrible. It's very similar to the meaning that uh, we have in Spanish. It's something, you know, very, very bad that happens. Terrible, similar. You know, it's, it's very, very similar as well. So horrible and terrible are basically like synonyms when it comes to describing things, bad things that can happen. Now... Bizarre. It will be the only one that I will not completely agree with here because something bizarre is simply something that we don't understand how it came to be that way. So something bizarre is something um, that we don't understand. I'm going to leave it at that because if I say more, it will be a spoiler. Like a strange. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So there you have the spoiler. The spoiler. Um, uh -huh. So yeah. Uh, horrible, terrible, and dreadful. Those are actually part of this description. Now, we're missing one word. What would be that word that can uh, refer to something that is awful? Where? Hmm? Where? Mm, well, I do not think so. Okay. I'm sore. Visor. Disgusting. Travel. Okay, well, we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to move into the next one and see which ones we have left after we're done with this. So let's see here. We have um, wonderful. In the column of wonderful, what can, can we place here? What can be something that we also recognize as something wonderful? 
Fabulous and fantastic. Okay. Fabulous. Fabulous and uh, fantastic. All right, so fabulous and fantastic. Great. Uh, let me go ahead and delete the ones that we have already taken. So we have fabulous, Marvelous. fantastic, um, and terrible, and uh, dreadful. Ooh, wait, there we go. All right. Uh, sorry, were you saying? Marvelous. All right, good. Yeah, that's a good one. Marvelous. Marvelous. Okay. And uh, what else can we um, set into the wonderful listing? Outstanding. Outstanding. Very good. Outstanding. And those are the ones. So we have fabulous. Fabulous, as uh, we, had, we said before, fabulous and, and fantastic are very similar to the, uh, to the translations in Spanish. So fabulous, we're going to use it when we um, experience something that makes us feel joyful, makes us feel great, or makes us um, appreciate that thing as that. Fantastic is basically the same when we live a moment or experience something that is uh, an amazing situation or, um, you know, something very enjoyable. Now, marvelous is going to be used with things that make your mind blow. Like when you experience things that are, unbelievable so that's when you're gonna go and mention something as marvelous okay so a marvelous thing can be something um you know basically incredible and that is also the reason why we have uh marvel the superheroes that's why they are called the company is called marvel because they talk about things that are incredible things that are almost impossible so yeah marvel and then we have outstanding now outstanding is something that is simply said aside from the regular. So something regular is just something regular, but outstanding. It's basically a very literal way of setting something aside. You know, it's, it's like referring to something that is completely different from the rest, but in a great way. So outstanding is like when you, um, for example, try your favorite drink for the first time. I don't know which is your favorite drink, but the, that time, try to remember that time when you tried your favorite drink for the first time and you felt like it was like, I don't know, like, like a- It's um, like a out of the four. Sorry? It's like a out of this yeah, world. Yeah, out of this expression. world, yeah. Basically, yeah. that's that's what outstanding uh, is going to stand for, you know, like saying something that is unbelievable, saying something that- um, has changed your mind basically or your life itself in, in a in a positive way now let's see about things that are stupid now before we get into this i just want to clarify in english it's not that bad if you say stupid so things that are stupid it's not like um like a terrible word as in spanish because i feel like in spanish we give such a higher value to this word but in English, it's not. In English, when you say that something is stupid, um, it is bad, yes, but it's not as bad as in Spanish. So let's see. What can be something that you guys can place into the stupid um, column? Dumb. Ridiculous. Okay, so we have dumb and ridiculous. Um... Really? Really? Which one? Silly. Silly. Okay, silly. And uh, one more. Which one is the one that we have left? Which one do you think will fit here? I'm not sure who. Uh, what did you say? Who? Okay, I'm going to give this one away. Here it will be absurd. 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 Because when you have something that is absurd, it's simply so something. Hmm? So rarely. But yeah. in the so like stupid, but rarely. Uh-huh. That's the way you were gonna describe it. You know, it's something stupid, but something stupid that you cannot even explain because it's like it's so stupid that you you just cannot believe that it is like that bad. So we're gonna start from uh from the bottom here. So absurd. 
absurd is going to refer to that, you know, something that is just so bad uh, that, yeah, that uh, it happens to be incredibly bad. That's something that is absurd. Then silly. Silly is simply when someone, you know, does something that um, is not good, but it's not necessarily bad. It's simply um, a way of people to maybe get some attention. You know, when you do something silly, like this is a word that is commonly used with kids and pets because they simply are trying to get your attention, but in a cute way. It's not something that you do um, with like malice and that you want people to pay attention to you and uh, that you need that attention on top of you. It's not necessarily that way, but it is, you know, something stupid. So it's classified as silly. Now we have ridiculous. When you do something that is ridiculous, it's normally something that people like in general or society doesn't see as normal. You know, it's like, for example, um, I don't know, you are at a meeting and in said meeting, sometimes we do kind of like defend the idea that we are all individual and that we can all make our own decisions. And I, I do agree with that. However, there are sometimes certain rules that probably we should try to follow. Like if you go to a meeting or a conference and everyone is sitting um, in on a chair and you simply want to call the attention of the rest of the people and sit on the floor, that can turn you into, you know, making a ridiculous of yourself. Or if the rest of the people are eating with the silverware, you know, the forks and, and knives and everything, and you start grabbing food with your hands, with your bare hands, that can make you feel like, um, turn you into the ridiculous. However, as I said, we are all individuals and we can all feel like it's part of our being to do that. So um, it can be ridiculous, in my opinion, only if you do it on purpose, like if you do it because you want to be seen doing this. So that's when I, something turns into ridiculous, when you want the attention from the rest of the people and you're like a show off. You're not doing this because of culture. You're not doing this because it's the way you live. You're simply doing it because you want the rest of the people to look at you. And then we have dumb. Something that is dumb, it's simply making the wrong decisions, you know, just, just picking bad, really bad. So that's something that I would have to recognize as dumb when people just make the wrong decisions, don't do the things as they should have been. So yeah, that's uh, gonna be classified as something dumb. And now we are going to the last column and uh, we're gonna try to see which ones are going to be the last few words. So something strange, how or what words can we set under the strange column. Unusual. Okay. Unusual. What else? Odd. Odd. Very good. Um, what else? Wait. Yeah. You guys already knew this one. Yeah. Bizarre. And weird, weird. So that basically means that disgusting was the one that we were supposed to set here. So something awful. The reason why we said disgusting is something awful is because have you guys ever tried, I don't know, any kind of food that is rotten? So when you experience such a thing, when you eat rotten food, you know, rotten means podrido. So when you eat something that is rotten and you get that terrible feeling, or that horrible, dreadful feeling or, or taste in your mouth. So disgusting, you know, it's something that you do not want to experience. And things that are awful are basically that. Things that are very bad for you to experience. So disgusting, there you have it. And that's the reason why we use disgusting in the awful column. Now, we move into the strange column. So something that is unusual. Why do we say that it's strange? Well. Because as the word itself basically states, it is something uncommon, something that you do not see every day, something that uh, basically steps aside from the regular. So unusual things are, I don't know, maybe someone who, um, who walks to work every day, but they don't only work, walk, they walk 10 kilometers, you know, from to and from work. So 
it's something very unusual. It will be something that you not you do not see every day. People who have to travel that far normally take the bus. They normally, I don't know, go on a motorcycle. They have their own car. Or maybe they can ride a bicycle, but walking that much, that is something very unusual. Now, something odd. So when you talk about things that are odd, what you're going to be referring to is something that is apart from the rest, you know, like a difference. Um, we did mention this in like outstanding. With outstanding, it's something that, yes, it is set aside from the rest, but in a great way, in some in a way that um, you want to experience it like that. But when something is odd, it's going to be something different, but in a weird way, you know, something that is different but it feels like it doesn't fit there. It feels like it shouldn't be like that. Like for example, um, we have the culture of wearing uniforms to go to school. So if one day you have, or you uh, wear to school before, you know, when you were still going to school, um, wearing, I don't know, a black shirt, you were odd. You were the odd kid around the rest of the one, of the kids in, in your class because the rest of them were simply probably wearing the white shirt, the regular white shirt, and you were uh, wearing a black one. So you were the odd kid because you were the one that was doing something that was different. So doing something odd is is when you experience things or do things that are apart from the, from the rest, but not in the best way, you know, probably in a kind of weird way. Then bizarre. I said it before, when you talk about things that are bizarre, I think that you don't understand, you simply don't know how people get to do those things. So that's what turns into something bizarre. And then we have weird. Weird is similar to bizarre. It's not as strong because something bizarre is something that you kind of, despite, you know, something you don't like. However, with things that are weird, it's simply a way of recognizing that you don't fully understand something. Like, for example, if tomorrow I showed up here uh, with my hair dyed in green, you would say, okay, so that's weird on the teacher. You know, that's not something normal. Like, that's something he hasn't done before. And you will see that, you know, it's it's something I haven't really done before. Therefore, that will um, qualify as me doing something weird. So, yeah. Um, now, wait a second. Wait a second. I um. So, any questions you guys may have regarding this, regarding the um. Oh, here we go. Any questions you may have uh, regarding um. The opinion words, or is it all clear? All is clear for me. Okay, so if you don't have questions, we're gonna take, uh, I think, two minutes. I'm gonna give you two minutes so all of you can create one sentence. You can pick any of the words, okay? You can pick any of them and write down one sentence where you are using that word. So I will give you two minutes at 8.45, we're gonna come back and start sharing our sentences. So we'll be right back into sharing a little bit of what we have learned with these odd words tonight. All right, so I needed some water. Um, so here we are. Now, uh, who has a sentence already who would like to start sharing the examples? 
me. Okay. Well, I remember when I ride the, the first time a motorcycle. It's outstanding for me. I really like like a ride a dragon or horse in the mountains. It's so fantastic and fabulous for me. Okay, great. It was an outstanding experience. Okay, great. Now, the only thing here, it would be that uh, we will have to say when I rode, see, sí, sería la única road. diferencia, road, when I first. rode uh, the first bicycle or on bicycle the first time. But the rest is great. So amazing. Yeah. Um, it's nice that you had such a great experience. In my case, it was terrifying. I remember that I felt like I was going to fall because uh, I didn't really know how to drive manual back when I tried to ride my first motorcycle. Um, and uh, yeah, it got me really, really, it got really into my nerves because I was um, next to a cliff and I was going to fall down there. So yeah, it was probably a really bad decision in my part. Okay, uh, who else would like to to share their example? Maybe Edwin Tamayo. My and for and my day I is in the hospital. Mm -hmm. That. No, sorry. Can you can you repeat it? Es que estaba bien trabado. So can you please repeat it? Oh, okay. Um, my my day was dreadful because my wife is in the hospital. Oh, okay. My day was dreadful because my wife is at the hospital. Okay. I hope that's not true because, yeah, it would be, you know, kind of sad if it was. But, yeah. Um, how about in the case of um, Rodrigo Mendoza? Okay. For example, uh, for what reason you feel fantastic this day? Oh. Uh, I, f I feel fantastic because it's, uh, it's Friday, for example. Okay. Great. Now, only one recommendation. Um, in Spanish, it sounds great when we say por qué razón, but in English, uh, we don't necessarily use it like that. We simply, like, you know, we simplify the sentence and we say why. Why do you feel fantastic today? So it's very weird to say for what reason. Now, you can do use for that reason. For that reason, when you're giving an explanation, like when you're trying to to prove why you did something, you can say, so for that reason, I'm late. Like maybe, um, you know, you you share uh, with your boss a picture that there was like a, a riot or, you know, there was like a huge amount of traffic and you can say for that reason or for this reason, I'm late. But saying for what reason um, will be re weird and it's not like that common. It's better if we just go straight to the point and say, why are you um, or why are you feeling fantastic? I think that's, that was the one today. So yeah, but it's still the rest. The example was great. Uh, okay, how about in the case of Harit? How about you, Harit? What would be an example you would be able to share with us? The weather these mornings with rain, cold and fall seems fabulous to me. All right, very good. That's an amazing example. The weather this morning with uh, fog, the rain and cold, I think you said, seems fabulous to me. The word seems, it's a very good addition there because um, when you say something like that, it's basically as if you're saying, you know, that you like that. So seems fabulous to me, it will prefer to um, saying that is appealing. You know, it's something that I like. So seems fabulous to me. Very good, very good example. Um, how about in the case of Rodrigo Hernandez? Would you happen to have an example, Rodrigo? Mm, my day, uh, all week, is, uh, is a horrible topic in my song. Uh, okay. I draw, I draw a pop-up 
tu contact mm-hmm. tu 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 Monday tu ah uh, Monday to Friday to Friday um every day is horrible traffic okay very good example in my town there is horrible traffic every day of the week basically that's what we're trying to say so from Monday to Friday it's horrible like every single day cool that's a nice example well nice uh referring to the grammar okay not to the actual thing now how about tell me in your case tell me do you happen to have an example for us okay maybe not right now uh how about ah se me fue blanca bueno uh in your case um Karen how about you do you happen to have an example for us uh yes to see the northern uh, lights must be outstanding yeah that's so true I yeah. ha- I, I was I like actually, to see it. yeah I would love to do that as well to yeah. see the northern lights um has to be an outstanding experience okay great very good that sounds amazing now we have uh, uh, probably the last topic. I think we are going to be able to go a little bit into the next one. But yeah, relative classes. It's something simple. We don't really need to spend too much time with this. Um, relative classes are used whenever you have two sentences that are related between themselves, but you don't know how to join them. And, and by some reason, you simply decided to go ahead and put a comma or a period in between those two sentences. And you say something like, he's an actor, he won two Oscars. So instead of connecting those two sentences, you simply set them aside and they sound as separated sentences, even though they are related and they are referred to the same topic. So the way in which we're going to do this is that we're going to establish this, con- this connection with a relative class. And, you know, the, the title itself basically tells you what these words do. They do establish a relation. So relative classes. He's an actor. Now, um, my recommendation, and it doesn't mean that, you know, it's because because it's my recommendation, you're going to take it. But my recommendation is that you try to go, when it comes to talking about people, go with who most of the time, because it will be way more clear for the listener that you're referring to a person. Because sometimes, for example, if I use a name, um, someone may understand that I'm talking about a person, but I will be talking probably about a pet or maybe a character, you know, that um, is, I don't know, in a movie or in a cartoon that I'm watching, and it's not necessarily a person. So uh, when you, you when you talk about pets, when you talk about animals, when you talk about characters that you have seen somewhere, then it's when I will highly recommend that you use that. So, for example, you say he's an actor. Who won two Oscars? You're talking about one person here. Now, um, if you say, I don't know. Um, Naruto is a kid or Naruto is a boy that um, won a ninja award. You know, then you might, you know, have like an idea that I'm not talking about an actual person. I'm talking about a character. So Naruto's a kid or Naruto's a boy that won the ninja war. So that will be because it's fictional. It's not real. Um, Maybe also if I say, I don't know, Petunia is a cutie who only, I'm oh, sorry, Petunia is a cutie that only eats crackers. ¿sí? En este caso, Petunia puede ser, qué sé yo, un perico. ¿sí? Normalmente se dice que los pericos comen crackers, que son las galletitas, ¿verdad? Como saladinas. So, yeah. So, Petunia is a cutie, see, that only eats crackers. In that case, I am talking about a pet. So, I'm not talking about a person. You can use who. Yes, you can. You can use who as far as you're talking about, um, like, something that moves or something that is alive, even if it's, like, in a movie. You can, of course, use who. But... As I said, it's way more recommended that whenever you're not talking about a person, pers- person, person, it's better that you go with the, that route. Now, um, here we also have on the other side, 
the use for things. When we're talking about things, here you can pick whichever sounds or feels better to you. I will not give you any recommendation here um, because, yeah, it's basically talking about things. So how it will work is the same idea. You have two separated sentences that are related to the same topic, but you do not know how to join them, how to set them together, and you simply wrote one sentence, a period, and then another sentence. And uh, if you had it like that, it would sound that it's a movie, it stars Kate Winslet. So it's a movie, it stars Kate Winslet. That makes sense, yes, it does, but it's not uh, fully useful when it comes to giving an explanation or establishing that connection in between um, two sentences. And that's when relative classes come into play. And you say something like, it's a movie that stars Kate Winslet, or it's a movie which stars Kate Winslet. Now, here it's way more complicated to use which, so it will, it will be harder, you know, if, if you say which, um, ya pronuncié las tres cosas ahí. So it will be harder if you say which uh, instead of that. It will be way easier to use that. It's a movie that starts Kate Winslet. And even though I gave you the advice, it doesn't mean that you can simply say he's an actor that won two Oscars when it comes to talking about people. You know, you're free to choose. You can use that in all the occasions. If you want to, you can go ahead and do that. So you can say that, um, I don't know, um, he's the person that started the company. You know, you're talking to, to to about something, someone, sorry, who is important to the company where you work. And you can say something like that. You know, he's the person that started the company. It is not recommended. It will be way more recommended to say he's the person who started the company. But it will be your decision after all. But um, yeah, the recommendation. Then. So when you talk about people, people, you know, a person that is alive, um, you can or should use uh, who when you're talking about characters, when you're talking about pets, when you're talking about anything that is not necessarily a person, but it can move and be recognized or seen as a living thing, um, you can use or should use that. And when you're talking about things specifically, it is uh, way better and easier to use that. but you can also use wish. So that depends on you. That depends on how you feel and what sort of connection you want to establish. But yeah, relative classes are simply referred to that um, setting. The, um, like the subject itself and why is this subject known? And then you set the relative class in the middle of the subject. The reason why it's known and then the relative class in the middle that will establish that, you know, connection between the two and will let you know that that's the reason why this person or this thing is known. So, for example, here on the thing part, um, I could say um, the Liberty Statue that was given to the United States by French, you know, that would be something that I can um recognize the liberty statue by or i could say also the liberty statue that is in new york that's another reason why i could make you know the liberty statue um recognized or known for so those are the main uses that we have for relative classes whenever we are talking about things that are related or or sentences that are related between the two but do not necessarily have like a clear path for you to establish that connection. That's when you set the relative classes there in between. So yeah, for tonight, I think that's gonna be it. That's all the information that we had to share this evening. Tomorrow, we're gonna continue with gestures and uh, feelings and a conversation and more related to the fourth um, section. And uh, please be ready. If you have any questions uh, relating to the platform, Maybe tomorrow we can go ahead, ahead and solve them, you know, if there happen to be any questions. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, 
I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Please enjoy your night and see you tomorrow. So bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye then. Thank you.